Hello, having looked at some positives and negatives of modern tech on organizations, let's now focus on individuals. Make sure in any exam question you, you are clear about what it's asking about. If it's asking about organizations, your answers will be quite different to the ones where it's asking about individuals. So be really careful. Looking now just individuals and not so much the company itself. And focusing on remote working because this has been a theme in lots of previous videos when we've talked about cloud providers and inclusivity and so on. And the one benefit to individuals of being able to work from home is that it does often provide a lot more flexibility. You don't always have to be in the office. You can work at home or you can work remotely from some other location. And to give examples of modern technology which allows this, you've got voice calling, you've got video calls, you've got cloud services, maybe with collaborative documents. Without these, not as many organizations would be happy with people working remotely. And if you are able to work remotely, you can approach your work in different styles. So working styles are the ways in which individuals prefer to do their work. So for example, you might like to listen to music when you work, you might like to work outside, you might like to do lots of your work on paper. Different working styles can be supported. And this might include flexibility over things like the time that work is being done. If you go to an office job, which is just nine to five, you, you can't control when you're working because you've got these set hours. But if the company has got a culture of being able to work whenever you want to, you might prefer to work early in the morning or late at night whenever you are more productive. You can also use any device, especially if you're using cloud services, which any internet compatible device can use. So you might prefer to use your own laptop or your own desktop computer. This picture is of somebody's home office, quite a basic home office, but you can choose where you want to work, wherever you're more comfortable, you can work there as long as you have a internet connection that's usually required. Now, working from home clearly has got pros and cons and those three things as examples, I'm framing as good things, but you could argue they've got negatives too, right? You may not have a device to use at home. Some companies would provide you one, but some wouldn't. You may not have a location at home where you can work quietly and without distractions. Not everyone's lucky enough to have a, an office they can work in at home. And for anybody, if you are working at home, costs will go up. You're paying for food potentially, you're paying for electricity. But as a general idea, being able to have remote working as an option, as an individual, means it increases the number of possible jobs that you could apply for. You, without remote working, you'd have to apply for jobs within, I don't know, an hour as a commute. But remote working, you could apply for a job in a different country even, and it would still be okay. Now, all of these factors have an effect on your mental well-being, how happy you are, how content, how motivated you feel. And technology can clearly have both positive and negative effects. Focusing mostly on the theme of remote working still, here are some positives, first of all, things which could be a good thing for your mental well-being. Well, if you are able to set things like the time you're working and where you're working, you might feel much more control of your own schedule and everyone likes to feel in control. You're not being bossed around as much. And that might mean you can also adapt for reasons like family reasons. Maybe you've got kids who you want to pick up from school. If you have got flexible working, you can do that without much bother. Also, people might like to work via technology because it separates them a little bit from what can be sometimes quite a stressful environment. Now, most offices shouldn't be massively stressful. That's obviously a bad sign, but you might feel much more confident and happy at home than you would be at work. And because you're not at work, you're not commuting. So you can use that time it would take to get to work or get home from work to do something else, something which makes you happier. I should say some people do like commuting or at least are not very troubled by it because they quite like the break and the separation. But I think most people would prefer that time for something else. And to give a final positive, which definitely, definitely depends on the individual, but for some people it can give a boost to self-confidence having this remote work because you're not focused on the distractions which occur in the office environment. You can focus on the quality of your work and that's what you're being judged for in many cases, just the work you're producing and not other factors which might lessen your confidence. However, depending on the person and the context, 
it could equally be a negative for self-confidence. You might feel not as important or wanted being far away from perhaps a majority of people who are working if they're all working in an office. So you might not feel like you're as key as you might actually be. And also many people when we're working from home find the work-life balance quite difficult. It's important to be able to come home and switch off from your work. But if your work is always on your computer and always available to you, you might feel compelled to work a lot longer hours than you might do if you were limited to just save a nine to five most offices are used to working in. Another negative is if a lot of your work is being done through a computer screen, you are potentially through video calls and chats and so on, having communication and connection, but being physically separated can certainly lead to loneliness. You're maybe not having the same relaxed conversations you might have with friends in an office. So that can definitely be a factor. And if this negative feeling, this unhappiness is sustained and happens over a long period of time, this can lead to depression, which is obviously a very difficult mental health problem to have.